this is the position of the heart and the body. This is the right atrium. And this is the right oracle, or the atrial appendage of the right atrium. This is the right ventricle. This is the left ventricle. And this is the left atrium. Along with its left oracle. The grooves, this is the right atrioventricular groove. The anterior interventricular groove. The posterior interventricular groove. The left atrioventricular groove. And the interatrial groove or septum. If we open the right atrium, we see four openings. The opening for the superior vena cava, the opening for the inferior vena cava, the opening for the coronary sinus, and the right atrioventricular orifice. When you close it, this becomes an opening which is guarded by the tricuspid valve. In the infant, this is a, an opening. It's the foramen ovale, but later it closes to become the fossa ovalis. The ridge above it, or the edge, is the annulus ovalis. The right atrioventricular orifice is guarded by the tricuspid valve. It has three cusps. Okay the anterior, the posterior, and the septal cusps. These cusps are attached to tendinous cords, which are called the cordi tendini. The cordi tendini arise from the papillary muscles. We have anterior papillary muscles and posterior papillary muscles. On the left ventricle, this is more obvious. This is the anterior, and that's the posterior papillary muscles. During diastole, the blood from the right, right atrium of the heart goes to the right ventricle and the valve opens. During systole, the valve closes to prevent the valve from pro prolapsing into the right atrium due to the high pressure in the right ventricle. These cordi tendini prevent the cusps from going into the right atrium. That's why they're attached to it. During systole, the blood from the right ventricle is pumped into the pulmonary trunk through the pulmonary opening, which is guarded by a semilunar valve or the pulmonary valve. The pulmonary valve does not have cordi tendini and does not have papillary muscles. During systole, the, pulmonary, uh, the cusps of the pulmonary valve attach to the wall of the pulmonary trunk as they open. The pulmonary trunk divides into the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery both of which take deoxygenated blood to the lungs. The left atrium has four openings for the pulmonary veins. The two left pulmonary veins and the two right pulmonary veins. These bring back oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left atrium. On the left atrium there is also the fossa ovalis. It's a common interatrial septum between the two atria. The other opening is the left atrioventricular orifice, which is guided, guarded by the mitral valve. The mitral valve has only two cusps. Again, the cusps are attached to the cordi tendini, which in turn are attached to the papillary muscles, the anterior and the posterior papillary muscles. During diastole, the blood from the left atrium goes to the left ventricle, and then it follows this path to go into the aorta. The aorta is also guarded by a semilunar valve or the aortic valve. The blood enters through here and goes through this path into the aorta. Just above the, the semilunar or the aortic valve, there are three bulges in the aorta or three sinuses. Two of these sinuses become the coronary arteries. This is the right coronary artery and this is the left coronary artery. 
the right coronary artery goes through the right atrioventricular groove while the left coronary artery goes down the anterior interventricular groove. The branches of the right coronary artery are the right conus and by the way this part of the right ventricle is called the conus or the infundibulum. It is supplied by two conus arteries, the right conus artery and the left conus artery. The right conus artery emerges from the right coronary artery. The other branches are the right ventricle the anterior ventricular branches, not visible here, and this is the marginal branch. The more important branch of the right coronary artery is the posterior interventricular descending branch because it descends down the posterior interventricular groove. As for the branches of the left coronary artery, and both uh, the right coronary artery also supplies the atria, it has atrial branches as well, as well as supplying both the right and the left ventricles. The left coronary artery has the left conus artery, the anterior interventricular descending branch, and the circumflex branch. These structures on the wall of the ventricle are called the trabeculi carni. The trabeculi carni. And on the upper part of the ventricle, this is the musculi pectinite. Angelirea, Baksema Musakanman, I have to say this. Baksema Musakanman, the sulcus terminalis, Baksaba me. Balam, the fisher has a sulcus terminalis of Iliradi. Scalabini, oraculaco, atriamaca, Naglabini, oraculaco, ventriculaca. بس مزبورة قرب دائن كرت مثلاً أقرب ما بين نوتو مزبورة بلي كريستا تيرمينالس مشكلة نية بس بحساب أمز كريستا تيرمينالس but I don't think so أبلا بيني أوركلاكو إتري مكابة بو فينا كانش أما كورونيري ساينس the coronary sinus is a continuation of the great cardiac vein and this is the middle cardiac vein and I'm not sure whether this one or that one is the small cardiac vein we have three veins, the middle, the small, and the, and the great. However, there are also the two anterior coronary artery the veins, or the cardiac veins. These do not go into the coronary sinus, they directly drain back into the right atrium. There are also the uh, main uh, vessels of the heart. This is uh, the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava. This is the ascending aorta. This is the pulmonary trunk with its left and right branches and these are the four pulmonary veins.